Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. In this video, I'm going to address how to fix some problems when it comes to slots and tabs and what to look for. And this is a pretty messed up file that is available online. And the creator was just out of his head. It was me. Hang around. I'm going to show you what to look for and how to fix these problems when you find them. And you will. And you might even find them in my files. So hang around. So some of you may have seen the first video on this project file, but this is going to fix a lot of the problems with that file that I didn't know existed at the time I created that file. I'm still learning. And uh, that right there is something you might consider when you're watching the videos. Look at the date of production. I just started this in June of 2022. So in those first six months, I'm going through a real big learning curve that you can go with me. They're worth watching. They're worth watching so you can learn what not to do. So if you haven't gone through that Hobo with Wood playlist, you're missing out on a wealth of information. And I promise you, I show you all the screw ups and I show you how to fix them. But this project, I was asked to make a bookmark. And not in the sense that you're thinking. Uh, the lady contacted me and said she knew I needed a, a bookmark. And she sent me a, an image off of Etsy. And it was three, like, one by sixes that were nailed together in the form of a triangle. And the, the concept was that triangle sits on your nightstand or your uh, coffee table. And when you're done reading your book, you just take that open book and place it over the triangle marking your spot. I said, oh, that's kind of a novel idea. But he was selling these three one by sixes nailed together that were mitered and nailed together, mitered nicely, but he was selling them for 40 and $45 a piece for three pieces of one by six. It's like, eh, no, I can come up with something nicer than that. So I came up with this design and this is my version of a bookmark. Now this is a large one and this file, once I'm done with all these modifications, it will be completely scalable and you'll need to use your resize slots and selection tool in Lightburn in order to be able to scale it and then adjust the slots and tabs to your material. And that's what we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna fix a lot of the problems with the initial design. But this is kind of neat. You've got two living hinges. Make sure it's high enough there. But two, two living hinges. And then she folds up and makes that perfect triangle. Now what I'm also going to do, I'm going to modify this file in this video so that there's actually a seam right down the middle. Then you can cut this out on your average 10 watt diode work bed. The seam will be on the bottom and completely hidden. And it's going to look really nice. And you can make this book design or bookmark, make this on your Rolly Lasermatic, your Comgro Z1, whatever it is you're working with. So let's jump into Lightburn and take a look at this file. I kind of like that. Okay, so this file is how you would get it. Um, I'll probably, the, I won't have my brand on it and I'll get rid of that artwork. Actually, you know what, I'll leave that artwork. I'll leave that artwork just in case you wanna do that. And there's an image of my finished product. And on this one, I actually did a gold leaf on the word Lord. 
But let's take a look at what the problems are with this file as is. Let's get rid of the image. I'm going to get rid of all of the text here. Shift, Control. Um, actually, I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to move it out of the way for right. Actually, take that back. I will delete that. We don't need that. And now I'm going to just select all of that. Group that and move it over out of the way for right now. All right, now, when you get a file from me or from anyone else that you need to resize your slots and selections, you select that entire thing and you go into Tools, come down to Resize Slots and Selection, and you look for any warning signs. Right here it says your selection contains the following unsupported groups, grouped shapes. So if you've got grouped shapes, they are not going to be recognized by this tool. So hit cancel and go in here and just go start ungrouping everything. You've ungrouped it all. And let's take a look here now at resize slots and selection. Now you have a warning here that says shapes that are not closed. Now that's going to be because of the living hinge. In fact, what I'm going to do in this file so that you don't accidentally mess up the living hinge, I'm going to group all of those together. And let's say cancel. I'm going to go ahead and select these and move them down here out of the way. I'm going to select all of this living hinge. I'm going to group it. I'm going to select all of this living hinge and group it. Now that living hinge, you can you can move one line, but you only do is move the whole hinge. And that will be more noticeable than accidentally moving a single line. So now that those are done and everything else is ungrouped because we ungrouped it all and then regrouped those hinges, if I select it all, I'll get that warning, but it won't matter because now I'm seeing all of the slots and shapes. Now here's the issue though. These triangle pieces have got slots and they've got tabs. And you do not want to be able to adjust both of these whenever you're adjusting slots and shapes. If you look at this design, if I was to resize by slot depth, you'll notice what's going to happen is this, in fact, let's make this go deeper instead of making it smaller. If I were to resize that slot depth, these slots are going to drop inwards, but this up here is not going to move. So when you go to try to put this piece together, those tabs that are here are going to want to slide down and snap into place according to the thickness of the material. But then the tab that fits up here, it's going to be sitting up here tall and proud. So you, your, your design dictates which one you're going to resize. Are you going to resize slot depth or tab height? And see this focal point right here, this apex right there, that doesn't move regardless. So you don't want anything that's on that plane all the way down the side of that design to move. That's got to stay the same, that's got to stay the same, that's got, so on and so forth. So you only want to resize your tab heights on a design like this. Now the problem is this one is still allowing you to do both. And this is something that I've just learned since making, my, making this design. What you can do to eliminate that is if you select both of these pieces. Actually, you know what? They're identical, so I don't even need to do that. I'm going to take this one and delete it. Now I'm going to take this file, or this design, I'm going to go into Node Editing. And the way that you distinguish this and you prevent that from being recognized as an adjustable area, all of these recess places do not need to move. All you need to do is come in here to the middle of that slot, and middle is the key word. Once you get right there, just hit the letter M, 
and that's going to insert and you don't have to be right in the middle because the M is going to put it in the middle see I was nowhere near the middle but put it there just put it in the middle insert hit the letter M and that's going to insert a node in all of those places and then we got to do it down here too and you want to look okay that curve comes around here coming right around we want to stop there no there no there now we're going to go back out and now I can hit control D duplicate that I'm going to mirror that send it over here out the way and now if I grab both of those and I go into resize slots and selection I can no longer see slot depth nothing's happening here there are no slots to, that can be widened but now you can change your tab height and that's only thing that you can adjust on there that is no longer an option that is the only option you want and vice versa works if you didn't want these to move and you wanted these to move then you would have just inverted the process put the middle node out here to, to so that and what that's doing is it's letting Lightburn know that this in here is not a slot. All right, now we've got to look at my slot width. We're going to look at this. We're going to go into the same tool, resize slots and selection, and we need to look at slot width. and make sure it's going to work correctly and it's recognizing all of those we're going larger the arrows are going up and if we go long or smaller there we go it shows them coming inwards all right that seems to have that resolved all right didn't have to do anything with the slots so cancel that so i just had to fix these so that Lightburn did not recognize them as slots. All right, so now that that's done, now I need to look at dividing this piece so that it can be made on a average 10 watt diode. If you're enjoying the videos here on Hobo with Wood, I ask that you hit that super thanks button down there. Consider being a patron on Patreon. But when I ask you to buy me a biscuit to show thanks, I'm not speaking figuratively. I have a Bojangles next door, right next door. And when I say buy me a biscuit, you're keeping me in biscuits. These, these videos and this video content and my Patreon page are my sole means of income. Google's not cutting it, so I'm depending on you to show your support down there or consider becoming a patron on patreon.com your support is greatly appreciated in the meantime cheers so if I draw me out a toolpath and put it on a uh, 300 by 300 not yeah what's going on there Oh, I put 3,000, didn't I? 300 by 300. There we go. Durr! Okay, now I'm going to group all of this together. And I'm going to send it to the top corner of that toolpath. Well, let's try that again. Now, top corner of the toolpath. There we go. All right, so a 300 by 300 piece of material is plenty large enough to get half of that on there. So what I want to do is if we look at this has a width of 460 by 398. So I'm going to say 460 by 398. We'll come here to this width. We're going to unlock the aspect ratio. 460 by or 0.398 divided by 
2. And I'm going to show you another trick on anchor points. See how I did have this uh, indexed up to the top left corner. When I changed that, now this is no longer in the top left corner. If I undo that, and what was that, 460 by 398? Yep, yeah, okay. Now if I select this, change my anchor point up here, and put it in this top left corner, and now I come here and say 460, 0.398 divided by 2. That did not move. All it did was bring that right into center. And now that's exactly in the middle of that. So now I can take and say uh, A, subtract B. Nope, that's not what it, that's going to be a cut. So we're not going to be able to. So we'll go to tools and do cut shapes. I don't want to do cut shapes though because that leaves that open. That get it, that, that split it. But I don't want to do that. Because, and I can close that with just a line. But there's another way to do that. Let's do undo, put that back, undo, put that back. Okay. Is that all grouped together? That's all grouped together. And it's a, what was the height of that? 177.8. 177.8. So now I'm gonna say A, Track B, and it's not letting me use my Boolean tools. Uh, ay, 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 ay. Okay, all right, I know why. All right, so now we're going to select all of that again, and now we're going to ungroup it all. Ungrouped everything. Now we're just going to select that outer perimeter only, A, and now select that middle one, B. There we go. And now I can subtract or intersect. What happens when I do intersection? All right. And now I can now duplicate this. Control D. Move it. And there's another way to do this and there's probably 10 more ways to do this. This is the way I'm doing it this time. And now I can bring that back over and line it up exactly where they meet, like so. And now grab all of that, group those, grab all of this, group those. And now I have two pieces for that living hinge that can be done on a 300 by 300 piece of material. And to show you, nah, come on now. Three hundred by three hundred. Put a tool path. And for those who are not familiar with the metric, 300 by 300 is close to a 12 by 12. And what you get when you buy most of your material from Amazon, when they say it's 12 by 12, because it's coming from China or other places that use the metric system, it's actually 300 by 300. So that 300 by 300 piece, or that, that piece fits on this 300 by 300 toolpath with lots of material left over. This, of course, is a mirror image of that. Then you've got these two pieces here. And let's go get our artwork and put it back in here, center it up. There we go. All right, now, actually, let's do this. We're going to put that in the center of that. And 
bring those. There we go. Now let's go get that photograph by importing the original design. Save that. All right, that's good. Now I'm going to save it. File. I actually just hit save button there. Save. Okay. Now I'm going to make this edited version available on hobowithwood.com with that artwork, hobowithwood.com. If you haven't been to hobowithwood.com, jump over there and check it out there's a lot of really neat designs on there from this bookmark to earrings to earring stands for displaying the earrings that you're already producing but you need a nice <clears throat> stand to display them for sale um lots of fun things lots of great projects i try to make my designs as flawless as possible before i put them on hobowithwood.com this design has not been on hobowithwood.com until this video. I had given away the previous version, but it is full of flaws. And that's what we just fixed. And now I'm going to have this flawless version online on hobowithwood.com. Jump over there and check it out. If you don't want to do the super thanks, jump over to the website and buy a few files. Uh, there'll be some fun things in there. To, that you'll enjoy making and support me at the same time. Consider going over to patreon.com slash hobo with wood. Become a regular supporter. <clears throat> My gold and silver tier patrons get free files every month, sometimes several times a month. The bronze level just gets a lot of uh, detailed information on, on how to's and, and so forth. But I do not share files with the bronze tier. If you want some of those free files, consider minimum silver. But for the full benefit, go ahead and commit and, and sign up for the gold tier. It is well worth your time, uh, and your or not your time, but your investment, if you enjoy making projects with your laser. You will receive more than that value in free files every month. And support me greatly. So thank you for watching. Uh, that super thanks is always down there. You can help buy me a biscuit. Um, Hobowithwood.com, patreon.com slash hobowithwood. I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I'm out.